from your perspective, as we shift over a little bit to payments and the world that you uh, live in and have grown up in and so on and so forth, what processes, procedures are you seeing in the payment ecosystem that are going to be more immediately affected by AI? And then from there, two-part question, um, how do you see the threat to the workforce itself in the payment industry? And you can actually expand that to the greater like, sure. economy as well. I mean, from a financial services standpoint, generative AI is not gonna probably be that impactful when it comes to processing, right? And the reason being is because, I mean, if you've ever used any of the, the chat GPTs, bards, et cetera, they will, of what I guess the coin that the term that's been coined is hallucinate. Right. They'll give you an answer that it just made up. And, you know, it's almost like the, the, the adage goes of, I read it on the internet, it must be true. Right. Like, so if it came from chat GPT, it must be true. Like, that's not necessarily the case. And, and is chat GPT, GPT just running through the entire internet to basically find data related to that, like in the Google machine, so to speak, to come up with its answer? Like, a human being somewhere programmed something, and then this thing got smarter than the human being somehow by being able to analyze data and information and then bring it up. Even the false information is the problem. Well, yeah, so it's inferring. And that's where it comes to... Uh, the differences between really machine learning and generative AI. Got it. So Got it. the data points that they're they're mapping to are like at this stage hundreds of millions at one time. So you know the other thing that kind of plays into it is the ability to have advanced computing power too. So quantum computing is a new thing. It's coming you know fast and furious, and that's also going to play a role in you know what happens with some of these AI models also. So from a Going back to the financial industry, if you really think about what's happening today, I mean, Visa does uh, can support, I think, 65,000 transactions per second. They have the ability within a few hundred milliseconds and, you know, that's fractions of a second to be able to determine if a transaction is likely fraud or not. And it's doing things like, hey, does he usually eat out on a Saturday? Does he, you know, do you buy flowers often? Do you, you know, what is your... What is your spending habit and what's your patterns typically as a consumer? And that's what they're doing when you get those fraud alerts. So if you if something goes uh, out of pattern, if you will, that's when um, you know the, either the, the bank that's issuing the card or the networks will send a, a fraud score and say, hey, that's probably a potential fraudulent transaction. So, I mean, that's really the biggest use case, if you will, of AI in um, the financial services industry from a back office standpoint. And the reason being is because it's too risky to rely on generative AI to make a decision because what happens when it's wrong, right? So the other side of the coin that, you know, not only people talk about is we have chat GPT, but what about the, the bad actors, you know, the fraud GPT or the chaos GPT, there's all these different ones that have been coined that are out there for to, to I'll say wreak havoc and to try to, you know, commit fraud on the other side. Right. So that's really probably the biggest danger, if you will, to the financial industry. So not just ours, but just in general, banking, investments, you know, across the board. And that's why you won't see generative AI really make its way into financial services from a back office perspective. I don't think anytime soon. Got it. Got it. And, and when we're saying, hey, these, you know, the fraud triggers exist today. There's a form of that that exists today. Is the idea that it speeds up that process or it is identifying things before they even happen in a lot of cases? Because a human being arguably can make the same mistake and, and that's something where like system with human being, you know, this combination of machine, sure. man, woman together is stronger than just a machine by itself or just a human being by themselves. So like does eventually the evolution take the human being out of the equation altogether well, to mean, a certain extent. So if you want to talk about, I'll say just transaction processing, no, it's too slow or you can't okay. have it. I mean, those transactions are happening and when I'm at a store, I expect it, you know, pay with my card right. within a second or two, I'm done. So there's no human you know, human intervention, I'll say pot possible, right? Uh, the other part of the, the equation when it comes to some of the machine learning algorithms is, you know, there's data and there's studies that's been done on um, false positives. 
So hey, this was identified as fraud and to decline the transaction. And maybe the consumer said, you know what? I'm just not gonna shop here because they didn't wanna deal with getting the text message from their bank and say, yes, that was me. And then going back and then putting it in again, they just abandoned the cart and left. So like that's the, that's the, I'll say the flip side, if you will, of what's happening from a fraud monitoring perspective with some of the machine learning um, algorithms that are out there is because at the end of the day, businesses are losing money because transactions are being fraudulent, but they're really not. So it's a balance. It's and it's not a. There's no silver bullet. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's interesting to see how this is going to continue to shift and evolve the back office as well as fraud in general, where you do have this these characters that are trying to sure. also, you know, drag it down as they go into battle of the good versus the evil, so to yeah. speak.